Hi, and welcome to my presentation. My name is Marina Leonie Mosklina, and I am working actually since the year 2012 in the field of entrepreneurship education, mainly at the Unternehmertum. Since 2012, I have worked especially in the international field of entrepreneurship education, but also with our local teams in Munich and in whole Germany. Besides that, I have co-founded a deep tech company, um, but I left it like one year later because I saw, okay, I want to gain some more other learnings than just a deep tech startup. And I also started um, a coaching training, the so-called German coaching Ausbildung, with a focus on systemic coaching for individuals and also for teams. Um, after that, I have worked for, or I have started working in the field of healthcare innovation, especially with focus on digital health and medtech, in the year 2016, which was kind of really interesting because we had a few great projects with some local hospitals here, where I gained a lot of knowledge about how our systemics like clinics, how, how do they work and how can we get more innovation in those fields. Besides that, I have been self-employed for coaching and also consulting for deep tech teams and um, individuals such as founders, physicians and other people that uh, needed systemic coaching for themselves or also their teams. And then I joined a consulting company, a big one with focus on the healthcare system. So we had project, projects especially for German hospitals, but also other companies in Germany with the focus on healthcare. Uh, I was responsible not only for coaching and also change management or implementation of new processes, but also had a few insolvencies and other strategic project for, projects for like four years. After that, I um, left the consulting company in order to get back to more the innovative field. The innovative field where you have more like lectures, where you can consult teams, where you work together with startup teams. And uh, so I kind of yeah did a lot self-employed, but I'm still doing, but I also regained courses with the uh, Unternehmertum team that I already have been working with and um, a few other teams. And I'm also working as a lecturer for healthcare entrepreneurship. So... These are a few facts about me that should give you a picture. Why am I telling you some, in my opinion, valuable insights about successful teams and what they have in common? So if you're talking about teams, I know you can have lectures about that. You can have lectures that will kind of never end because there are so many insights to what is really making a team successful. But I would like to share a few learnings from all those years working with different teams, especially in the field of deep tech, but also in the field of healthcare. And what makes them successful? So what do they have in common? How are they working together? How have we worked in our really successful deep tech company back in 2016, which is a few moons ago right now? And I would like to start with the topic of goals. So if you're working in a team, especially a startup team or a project group, it's really, really crucial to have goals. Goals will guide you through a day, through a week, through a month, but also through years of work with a specific goal or for a specific topic. So what do I mean by goals? Actually, a goal can be something that you can start with as your daily routine and ask yourself, okay, what is my goal for today? What specific tasks do I want to fulfill? What is good for me as a person, as a daily goal? For example, do you want to exercise for, for an hour or half an hour? Do you need to uh, go around the block and get some fresh air to be efficient and more effective? Or do you want to meditate or do anything else like that? So if you're working in a team, it's really crucial to have teams that will, uh, to have goals that will give you a certain structure. So you will know what do we need to achieve this week? What do we need to achieve like this month? Or what do we need to do if we would like to fulfill the goal of getting this VC on board or having a business angel on board or to apply for a fund or an incubation or acceleration program, for example? What do we need to do? It will give you structure. 
if you work without goals, you might drift into conflict because it will then be kind of unclear what you are doing and especially why you are doing. So if you start your day, your week, your working in a team setting, always have goals and ask yourself, is that what we're doing today? Is this meeting or is this communication structure that we actually are having goal-oriented for our bigger goals? A next crucial point is communication. And communication, or if you think about communication, it seems kind of endless. What makes it really interesting, what makes it kind of complex, but it's also really a low-hanging fruit as one of the tools that you can change a lot with. So if you think about communication, there are many perspectives, and I would like to focus on two of them. How do you communicate with your people in your team, or actually your peers, your mentors, your VCs, your business angels, your professional network, and how do you communicate with kind of yourself and your more private space, like friends or your private community or a team or something like that in the field of sports, for example. So if you structure your communication, you should always ask yourself, is it efficient and effective, especially effective in this way of what do I need to communicate that we can achieve our goals? How do I need to communicate with my team or my peers or my um, direct colleagues in order to get set and be ready to do something? If we don't structure our communication, it might be kind of weird. And if your communication isn't goal-oriented, to drop on the first topic, goals, then you won't achieve anything and it might get kind of fuzzy or fluffy or you don't know where you're actually heading or why you are communicating what you are communicating. So use it as a tool where you can also bring growth, structure, clearness to people. And if you're communicating, always have in mind, people will remember how you made them feel and not only your words. So that should be like your inner mantra. How do you want to communicate with someone? What do you want to tell that person and why? With, with which emotions are you approaching the person or your peers or the group or the project group and so on and so on? Are you clear? Are you in a good state of mind? Do you have a clear mindset? And what is your goal when, you're, when you have said what you're aiming to say? And how do you want to make people... What should they feel? What should they remember from you when they, when they have talked to you? That should be kind of your leading question. Orientation. Orientation is also a really crucial topic. And orientation has many different facets. So you can start with what is your own orientation. If you start into a working day or if you start, especially in a startup or a project group, it's it's really important to know where am I heading today? Where am I heading in the next few hours? Where am I heading in this pitch, this meeting, or whatever you are actually doing? So that you will see some kind of silver lining for your day. Because there might be some challenges, there might be some knockouts during the day or the week or a certain topic, but be clear about where am I heading? What am I aiming for? And have the clear path in your way that you can always thrive to achieve what you actually want to achieve. And if you're clear and if you're oriented on a daily basis, especially, and it's totally okay to have days where you will be like, oh God, I don't know, I don't feel well, I'm not sure how this pitch went or anything else. But if you have this orientation, especially for, or for example, if you can say to yourself, okay, I'm doing the best that I can to achieve this and this and this goal, and these are my milestones, I will know where I'm actually heading. So have a path, have a way, where you can also take your peers, but also your team, or for example, your co-founders and other people from your team with you. Because sometimes they will have a weird day and they will need some orientation from you. So see that you and your team always have some clear path. You can also start with some kind of orientations in the morning or in a review, in an update or in a daily true fix, for example. That might help you to orientate yourself in order to understand what do I want to do today? What is really important today? And 
what is a nice to have, but not that important thing for this particular day, this particular meeting or this particular goal that you're aiming for. The power of visions. So if you know where you're heading, let the vision be kind of your fuel in that car that you're driving to achieve your goals, to be oriented, to know where you're actually heading. If you have this vision clear for yourself, especially on kind of or in kind of two steps. One step is what is your personal vision? What is driving you? What do you want to change in this world? And another vision is what do you want to change with your team? Are you aiming to change lives of patients, for example, or a certain group or a sports group or whatever it is that is driving you? Or is your vision, for example, to change the system, to make something better, to, for example, make healthcare more approachable for specific patient groups? Have this vision that you can really feel, that can give you some guidance on bad days, that can give you some guidance if someone is saying no to you. For example, uh, ABC or you had an application running for for a program or something and you will be declined so have that vision show you in your mind what is another path that I can take and let it really fuel you because without a vision it might be just some kind of idea of an idea but it's not as powerful as this vision that you can gain from your inner self and say okay that's what I stand for that's why what I would like to be connected to so if people knew my name they will connect me, for example, for this and that healthcare digital app or whatever it is that you're doing. Use that power, have it as a fuel, and on bad days or after bad meetings, use it also with your team to envision that there's something you're thriving for. And there are so many other paths, even if you don't see them in this way. So have it there, have it clear, have it like tattooed on your forehead or somewhere in your office where everyone can see it and make it a really feelable vision, not just words. Have it as a feeling, as a daily reminder, as something that speaks out from your heart. Another crucial point is also feedback. If you just look at the word feedback, and I like to do it a lot because it's like feeding someone back and someone is feeding you back. And if you think about that topic in that sense, especially in the team perspective, you will maybe change the way to think about feedback. Or hopefully you do, because feedback is, it's like something that makes you grow, that makes you thrive, that gives you an understanding how you can develop to a better person or a better salesperson or whatever your goal is and where you are actually growing. So it can be something that helps you on your way. And if you change that perspective, you can also give feedback to other people and let them grow, let them develop and have give them some like a push in the right direction. But feedback is not only this this great thing that is so valuable that can make you grow, it can also kind of destroy you or destroy other people. And that's why we have to think about it in the right mindset, actually, and see, okay, why am I giving feedback to someone? And one crucial point is, do I have an invitation to give feedback? So did someone approach me and say, hi, Marina, can you give me feedback to this, 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 and that? So I'm invited and my feedback will be valued differently than if I'm just approaching a person and giving him or her feedback to something they haven't asked feedback for because then probably they are not really open to it or it's not their kind of learning mission right now. So it's always good if you would like to give feedback to get that invitation and say, hey, I have observed some things I would like to share with you. Maybe it will be valuable for you in order to have better presentations or something like that. Can I share it with you? And then be clear about the fact that you can hurt someone with your words, but you can also give someone that really great push to be better, to develop, to yeah, see what you can do better. And 
so if you're giving feedback, be also really clear about your emotions or your state of mind, actually. Are you in a good state today or are you in a nah, not really good state? So then probably gather that feedback, but give it at another time. Where you open, where, where you're in a good state, where you feel good and you're not kind of in, in anxiety or stressed or in a depressed kind of mood where you will like kick the other person. Not, not in a bad intention, but just out of those feelings. So if giving feedback, filter yourself first. And if someone gives you feedback, you can see it as a present. You can take the present, but you can also say, no, thanks. You can have it back. And have some kind of, I like to call it in, in my coachings, filter years. You don't have to like get everything or soak everything in someone is telling you. There are so many people around the world that are giving you feedback without being asked or they don't know if you want to want to have feedback to something. They're just throwing their learnings and stuff on you. So be clear about that. You don't have to soak it in and filter what you really need and what might help you and filter all the rest out and put it to your mental trash. The mindset is also a really, really important topic. So if you're working in a team, be clear about what is the impression you're giving in your team? What is the impression that you're giving in meetings with your team? And what is your mindset? If it's your mindset more like, okay, I'm the best person, I will do it, and I just need those five other people to help me and to clean up like my uh, red um, my, my red carpet or are you really an item with them are you really understanding each other are you really able to listen to understand needs do you have the mindset to understand your potential for example customer your potential patient group if you're working in the field of healthcare to understand VCs and to kind of more think more in some way like if you're always thinking of stakeholders in your private life but also in your professional life to, with the mindset to be curious, to be totally open or to understand what does another person need and how can I help him or her or this whole group? What are their needs? Where are they willing to pay? How can I help them with all my skills and all the setting in our team? So if you have that open mindset and you can reflect really easily on your mindset and say or ask yourself, what is my mindset about? So if someone will see me like a little bird following me around in my meetings or my daily life, what would that bird give me as feedback? What would the little bird say how I'm talking to people, how I'm approaching people, how am I looking, am I kind of more smiling in an open way or am I more the grumpy person not really getting in touch with other people? So, And what do you want to use your mindset for? This is also a little throwback to the topic of goals. And the last thing that I have learned in all those year in all those years working with different teams and also in my other in my own startup but also consulting and coaching many many teams especially if they are preparing for VC rounds and if they are growing getting more and more and more uh, people on board having colleagues and employees it's it's such, it's such a growing environment. So if you're in that state, if you're founding a company, especially in a high complex system like the healthcare world, especially in Germany, enjoy the ride. Founding a startup or working in a project team can be really a hard roller coaster ride. And you will have your ups and downs. You will sometimes have the feeling that you're not able to make it out of the downs, but there will be ups. And always consider it as something that is happening for you because it's changing your path. And there is constant change. So even if you're riding a roller coaster, the path will change or the view will change. And from within, your cells are changing all the time, you know. So enjoy also that change and be aware of the fact that you're never stuck in a situation beside your mind because change is all the time around you and you're always free to say okay we have tried it like that it didn't turn out very well so what is another way we can try so how can we have this vision fueled right for our team or for our project that will 
get us to a point of success, of fulfillment, of fulfilling a vision and making a difference and a change. And also go deeply into those emotions of really enjoying those learnings because they are so unique. And at some point, like many years or even months later, you will turn back and laugh about the situation that you're actually feeling stuck in. And then you will say, okay, thanks, I learned it all. I will not make the same things again. And even if you can change them, then. So there are a lot of opportunities. There are so many things and paths you can go in order to fulfill your vision, to gain your mission, to make what you're actually doing in a successful business. And if you're struggling to do all those things alone because you don't have to, you can always share and talk to your peers. You can have a mentor or many mentors, but you can also reach out to, for example, coaches and get help to get through all those thoughts by yourself and talk and reflect with another professional person. So that are some valuable lessons that I wanted to share with you in order to give you some insights what are the common topics of successful teams. If you want to get to know me better or if you want to uh, see some things in my uh, LinkedIn profile, there are the links and also feel free to reach out if you need consulting or coaching, but also if you want to get in touch via my mail. Thanks a lot for your attention and have a good day.